Welcome to Dr. Snap and Crackle. Woo. Good job. How did you feel since your last adjustment? Oh my god. Amazing. Yeah? What was amazing? Like, like every single day, like I'm like, you know, constantly popping my neck or twisting side to side to pop my lower back. And I think only maybe two times in the last week I've done that versus every single day, all day. Wow. Yeah. So and I wasn't sore. So you weren't I was sore. Like, Are you sore? No, I wasn't yeah. sore. So everything just felt more balanced. Yes. That yes. is so cool. I love it. Cool. Well, let's see how it's doing. Let's make some progress. You're going to actually okay. go stay face down for me. Okay. I just want to see how things are showing up because we had a chance to review, analyze, interpret your x-rays, mm -hmm. and we're gonna be able to go over that today, which is super cool. I'm definitely noticing the hips have some inequality here, so this right one, we want it way down in here, mm -hmm. and it is going to need adjusted in order for us to do that. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'm noticing is just how much tension you keep in the hip and pelvic area, mm -hmm. and that's showing us on x-ray that there's definitely some inequalities in here that have been positioning and and we'll go over all those x-rays um, after okay so we don't need to do that right now but we'll do that in just a minute for now let's go let's focus on you and let's get your body squared away adjusted analyzed and interpreted this side up for me you're gonna be on your side let me close this door to make it not as loud. So when your hips are as locked up as yours are, mm -hmm. they make some pretty big adjustments, okay? Mm -hmm. We're about to do that right now. This is going to be one of those life-changing adjustments for the hip. This comes right over. Already moving. We're not even doing anything, right? Wow. <laughs> Let's go to the other side. That was pretty big. Did you feel the whole tailbone move and the hip move? That was pretty amazing. This side is key because of all this tension. You feel it? Right on the side. In the IT band right there. That climbs up to the actual hip. The hip joint. This comes over. Good job. And then we're going to go face down. Did you see how there are several different yeah. movements? It was yeah. click, click, boom. <laughs> yeah. Click, click, boom. Yeah. It's a great title name. <laughs> That's going to be the title of your video. Click, okay. click, boom. <laughs> yeah. well, I think that is a song, so it might not. <laughs> Keywords might not search too well. Right. <laughs> right. Very nice. We are moving so much better. Whenever I see a lot of misalignment on the sacrum, one of the things that we want to do is we want to use our tools to start helping speed up the momentum. Part of getting adjusted is about momentum. A lot of people don't understand that when you're seeing a, a chiropractor to really help your body out and to get your body to that next level, the biggest factor, other than you know, obviously which chiropractor you're seeing, which office you're going to, mm -hmm. how much um, you know skill they have and attention they're they're doing and, and value they're giving to you, mm -hmm. um, the other biggest factor is that consistency. So how how much consistency can you have? How can you build upon it? What we're doing here is a very physical thing, just mm -hmm. like working out in the gym or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Consistency is key because if you go too long with your body too stuck all those adjustments are just the more force gets in there it starts mm -hmm. throwing things out of balance again mm -hmm. um, we definitely don't want that okay in the lumbar spine we are coming down this is awesome wow oh. <laughs> big adjustment felt good we got to go higher t8 vertebrae big breath in let's bring the t8 forward relax out Big adjustment. Good job. We're getting there. We're climbing right up and then relaxing those shoulders. Excellent. That is the sizzler adjustment. We love that one. Um, we're going to do nice. Wow. 
That was a big sizzler. Did you feel that? Yes. That's like the sizzle on the steak. It's oh, just... yes. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. More than amazing. That was so good. I loved how that opened up not only the base of the neck, mm -hmm. it opened up the back trap muscle, mm -hmm. and then that climbed down even into your scapula as it went into the shoulder as well. Mm -hmm. So it just gave a huge release. Mm -hmm. And in the neck area, you know, your neck has a tendency to want to compress. Mm -hmm. Most people's do. Mm -hmm. um, it's just varying degrees. Yours is super tight. So all of this has to come out more. We have to actually open up the head and neck, okay? Because mm -hmm. if it stays compressed like that, it's going to keep this swelling, tenderness, mm -hmm. and soreness. You can feel it. It's mm -hmm. just so sore. So let's relax. Good, very specific right here. This is your Atlas vertebrae. Mm. Dang, I didn't know all those bones were right there. <laughs> Dang, you didn't know it could move that way, did you? Mm, that's so good. <laughs> awesome. You're going to be on your back for me. You're doing amazing. Everything is doing so good. I love it. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to straighten some things out here. I'm going to pull you just like that. We're going to actually be decompressing the cervical spine. And to do that, we're going to do what's called an axial traction. Just like this, okay? So that comes right there. Okay. And we need to do that a little more advanced. We're going to use our Y strap to do that. For now, let's bring the arm up. Push back towards me, push strong, I love it. Let's do this one. Push back towards me, very strong. Let's sit up at the end of the table. This is gonna help get a little more motion for us, okay? This comes right here. Now, have you ever done this before? The first time. This is your first time? The first time. Right? The very first time? Other than that though, that was the very first time you had yeah. ever used the Y strap? Yeah. yeah. Um, what did you think after the first time doing it? It was amazing. Everything, it was just amazing. <laughs> it was just amazing. Everything opened yes. up? Yes. How far down did it go the first time when you felt it open up the spine? I think, like, at least to, like, right The here. middle of the back area. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually what happens when we're building up with the Y strap, we, we can get lower and lower and lower mm -hmm. as we're freeing up the spine from adhesion. So it's mm -hmm. pretty exciting as we see progress. You're going to lay back right here, and then we just want you to relax. We're going to take that in there. Very nice. Good. You just let everything... There it is, that stretch. Good. Oh, yes. Wow. Very nice. Put that in. Ooh. Let's go ahead and sit up. What did you feel with that? Oh gosh, it's like, I feel like at the airport when there's not enough balance on a plane, we have to add ballast and they're like 25 weight pounds and I feel like I've just released like three or four of those. Oh my God. What do you do on the for the airlines? Well, I do the hiring, but I still engage with the ramp people. And okay. The, the people that do actually the groundwork for the airplanes. Um, so I still... Which airlines you work with? American. So you're with American Airlines, and you have to they have to balance the planes out of there. Yeah, right? like the ramp agents, they, yeah, so it's like a weight and balance on the plane. Um, so yeah, I feel like a lot of... Like we just did that to yes. your body. That's awesome. So cool. Very good. I love it. Good job. Everything is looking so much better, so much more balanced. Yeah. Let's go ahead and bring you into the other room so we can go over these films, okay? So just to start out, one of the reasons we look at x-rays is obviously to determine how your body's been doing, how stress has been building in it, if there's any signs of problems with the joints, with the ligaments, with the nerve system, with the discs. There's so many different things that we pay attention to. We also are looking at the alignment. We're looking at very key specific things um, as well as very general things. Uh, one of the things people don't realize is they may have had x-rays at like a hospital or something like that. 
hospitals are going to be more general. And basically what that means is they're looking at fractures and breaks and tumors and, you know, serious issues and problems. Uh, it may be the emergency room that, that people get their x-rays at. And often they'll tell people, you know what, everything's good, you're cleared to go home. Basically what that means is you don't have broken bones, you don't have a major issue that requires surgery or, or you to stay in the hospital. However, it doesn't mean everything is completely perfect. And so when you come into the chiropractic office, and, and often I've seen x-rays from um, emergency rooms and things like that, and where the person would get the okay, they bring them into the office here, and we see some, some discrepancies with the alignment, with the joints, and just longer term issues that over time get worse and worse and worse. So that's what we're looking for today. When we're looking at the body, we're gonna start with the hip and pelvic area. Basically, as we pull this up, one of the things you're gonna notice here there's a quite a few different things going on with your hips and basically what that means is there's going to be one ilium comes around on this side it actually connects right here in the middle that joint right there is called your pubic symphysis you're going to see that connects to the other ilium on this side one of the things you're going to notice right off the bat is the size of this we think of these kind of like elephant ears okay yeah. see the size of that compared to the one over here this is obviously much wider. This one's much more narrowed. That is an indicator of internal and external rotation alignment. So if we have those hips and one of them's more narrow, it's because that hip can turn in and vice versa, it can also turn out, um, giving us the, the changes. We wanna see balance left, we wanna see balance right. So we want things to be as equal as possible, okay? That's one of the indicators. Another thing we can do for that indicator is we can look down to where these holes are. Um, these holes or these acetabulums um, as they're called. Basically what we're looking for um, when we're looking at the hips, again we're looking for the left to be as congruent to the right so we can look where the actual ball and joint comes in and then we can also look right at the holes right here. Do you see how those look a little different? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when we're looking at x-rays we refer to these as cat eyes and basically they're supposed to look completely identical. Mm -hmm. Again if we take that same scenario or if we take your hip, if we twist it and rotate it, mm -hmm. it's going to make that shape mm -hmm. appear different on one side versus the other. It again can be an indicator of misalignment. The other indicator is obvious look at the zipper yeah so the zipper is obviously not in the middle of your hips it's, it's shifted over to one side so everything's kind of tilted your zipper is following your lumbar spine not where your hips and pubic symphysis is okay so that line from the pubic symphysis comes up ideally that line is going to be more in tune with with all of these um, joints here the problem is you can see these joints aren't lining up anyways even if this were in the correct position over here, it's still not lining up with all of these little dots. Yeah. This is showing us exactly where the curves are, where we're having misalignment, where we're having angles. The reason angles are important, angles equal stress points. The more we have a curve, the more stress we're going to have on that angle and on that joint and on that bone, on that muscle, on that nerve, on that ligament, okay? So we want to see these things as balanced as possible. This is obviously going to be your left side and this is going to be your right. We're standing behind you is how that works. As we climb up your spine, one of the things that we're looking for, again, we want to see the line, okay? We want to see the spine as balanced in that line as possible. Anytime we see curves, so we see it coming over to, it's kicking over to the left, comes back, kicks over to the right, and then it comes back over to the left here. This is a compensating curve, and basically what it means is because you have some of the spine over to the left side of the body, it's gonna push the, the spine over here to the right, and then vice versa, trying to balance your body out as best as it can, okay? This would not be considered scoliosis because it's under 10 degrees. If it were over 10 degrees, meaning just a little more angled, they would actually call that a scoliosis. head and the neck, even if I took all those lines away, you could see how the head's kind of mm -hmm. angled. Um, so the, the whole body just comes over to the side that, you know, again, on the other film, we, we saw that was going to happen. When we look at the shoulders here, we look at how high the clavicles are. Mm -hmm. Basically, and we can hit this little button here, if it'll let me, there it is. We can see that if we, we click on the shoulder, then we click on the shoulder, we want to see how balanced those are. Mm -hmm. The shoulders are doing pretty balanced, which is great because that's going to tell us that we're going to have more of a likelihood of straightening this out quicker, easier, and faster. Sometimes we can actually see the shoulders tilted higher or lower 
um, on one side or the other. We definitely want to start bringing the head back into alignment though. One of the things I want to mention too is the side view. So now we're getting three dimensional because we can see forward, we can see side, and we can um, start understanding how the body is in relationship. These are all your vertebrae, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, in between your vertebrae, you have a disc space. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to have a nice thick disc space in the front, it's supposed to go th right through the middle and into the back. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're going to notice is this, this back space here. We're starting to get mild compression. So it's not terrible by any means, but we're definitely noticing right in this little spot right here, there is some mild compression there. Um, just lets us know that, you know, when we're making those adjustments with the hips and pelvic and lumbar spine, it's going to be important to make sure that we keep this area opened up. That way it just doesn't keep um, overdoing stress and wearing itself down and breaking down and causing pressure, so on and so forth. And then on the side view of the cervical spine, you're actually supposed to have a curve in your neck. So when it comes from the side, we don't want to see just a straight up and down neck. We want to see a curve in this position. It would be like a C-shaped curve. Mm -hmm. And that is called the cervical curve. Mm -hmm. You see how these muscles right here create a curve? Mm -hmm. The bone should do that same exact thing. Um, when you have that cervical curve, again, it just helps the spinal cord line up correctly with the, the brain, the midbrain, and um, attached to the spinal cord. And this configuration, it has to come straight, straight, straight. Once it gets to here, it has to turn abruptly to get back in here. So it's not going to be as smooth as if it was just this nice mm -hmm. curved opening and um, pipe for the spinal cord to travel through. This is something that we would want to work on, uh, making sure we're getting the head just coming back just a little bit more, helping to regain some of that cervical posture um, with the tension of the neck and how you know the neck feels so tight all the time and has the tight mm -hmm. muscles and the tense muscles and as we're feeling in there some swollen joints mm -hmm. some irritation mm -hmm. as we start to work on it it's going to not only help all of that stuff and all the symptoms but it isn't going to help um, it's going to help the curve as well regain back to where it needs to be good and any questions on any of these films i don't it was very detailed good